Hey there everyone, welcome to Ants Reptile Colony, where today we will be looking at three modes of reproduction, including egg laying. So for this and more, stay tuned. I'm sure most of us have seen eggs, like this chicken egg, and that we know that it comes from a chicken. But chickens are not the only animals that can lay eggs. In fact, the majority of vertebrates, those are animals with backbones, lay eggs. And the process of egg laying, or rather the trait of egg laying, is referred to as oviparity or ovipary. Therefore, animals that lay eggs are called oviparous. In general, oviparity means that fertilization of the egg and development of the embryo occur in different places, i.e. that the fertilization is internal whereas the development of the embryo is external. Of course, there are exceptions, such as with frogs and fish, where both fertilization and development are both external. But for internal fertilization, once the egg is fertilized, a hard shell such as this one is formed. I don't know if that was on camera, but you know I was holding an egg, so we're good. And this is to protect the embryo during development. So in birds, it's this hard calcareous shell, Whereas in reptiles, it tends to be a much softer, more leathery type shell. And with fish and frogs, it is a almost gelatinous type layer. And then once the shell is fully developed or fully formed around the embryo, the egg or eggs are then laid, depending on the creature or on the animal, in a hole, on a leaf, underwater, you know, things like that, wherever that species happens to lay their eggs. The embryo then within the egg starts to develop. It gets all its nutrients from the egg yolk, which is found within the egg or within the eggshell, and that's where it gets all these energy and things to develop. Once it is now fully developed, it'll then crack open this egg and hatch. The period of development is referred to as incubation. So from being laid to hatching is referred to as incubation. Vivipary or viviparity is in a sense the opposite to oviparity in that no eggs are laid. So young are born live, such as with humans. The other trait of viviparous animals is that both fertilization and development of the embryo occur within the mother's body. So no eggs are being laid. The embryo develops within an amniotic sac, which is found within the mother, and receives nutrients through the a placenta or a similar structure attached with an umbilical cord. This is so that all nutrients or all waste and gases exchange can take place through this placenta or placenta structure. So in essence, it all goes through the mother. There is no yolk sac to receive energy and nutrients from. The period that the embryo is developing within the mother is known as gestation or a pregnancy. And then once the embryo is fully developed, the mother will give birth to one or more young. Of course, live. So even though there is an egg, because the egg still needs to get fertilized within the mother, there is no shell being developed or formed. And in the beginning, I mentioned that there were three modes that we'll be covering today, but we've already done egg laying and live birth. So surely animals either lay eggs or don't lay eggs, at least in the broad sense. But of course, this is nature, which means it is nothing is ever as black and white as it should be, and that there's always surprises and exceptions to every rule. And this is one of them. And this is called ovoviparity or ovoviparity. And that is almost a halfway point or rather more like a bridge between oviparity and viviparity. For oviparous animals, fertilization and de development of the embryo both take place within the mother. And the young are then given birth live. Same as with viviparous animals. But you're thinking, well, what more is there to it? That's it, they then viviparous. But there's a catch. There are still eggs involved for ovoviviparous animals. And that is once the eggs are fertilized, a, a membrane or a membranous shell is then formed within the mother with each individual embryo feeding off a yolk sac as they develop. Which means once again, because they have the yolk sac, they are receiving nutrients from that yolk sac in order to grow. And that is then the same as oviparous animals. So it's taken a little bit of viviparous traits and oviparous traits. Then once the embryos are fully developed or the young are fully developed within that membranous egg, they break out of that egg. They hang around for another couple of days where they're then given birth to live. So the eggs develop and form within the mother, hatch within the mother. The young are around for another couple of days where they start finishing the last little bit of the yolk sac or receive nutrients 
from the mother in other ways, such as from non-fertilized eggs. Then, once those couple days passed, they are then given birth to live. So there is live birth, and there is eggs being formed with yolk sacs. So oviviparous animals then have traits from both worlds, the viviparous and the oviparous. Examples of oviviparous animals include many vipers such as the puff adders, as well as boas such as the red tail boa. So just to go over them one more time, we've got the oviparous, which are the egg laying animals, the viviparous, which are the animals that give birth to live young, and the ovoviviparous animals, which have the eggs develop within the mother's body and then give birth to live young. Hope you enjoy learning about three different modes of reproduction as much as I did today. If you want to learn more about anything, please be sure to drop those ideas and questions into the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. It costs you nothing. Or at the very least, click on this video over here. Or is it over here? I'm not sure. The video on the screen because that's the video that YouTube thinks you should watch next. But until then, remember, it's never too late to learn and I'll catch you in the next one.